Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be talking about nutrient control, uh, nutrient export, um, all things nutrient wise uh, within our reef tank. Now this is based off a subscriber question. Uh, to sum up the email, basically, uh, this person has had an unsuccessful reef tank in the past due to excess nutrients. Uh, he thinks overfeeding, maybe bad RODI system. Either way, uh, he is starting his second build and he wants to move in the right direction. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys some tips and tricks in my personal approach to nutrient control within a reef tank, and hopefully I can help you out. Okay, so let's go ahead and first talk about what I consider to be the most important part of a reef tank, and that is the water quality. So make sure you have a quality RODI unit or a reverse osmosis deionization unit. Um, make sure you're spending the money on this. I cannot stress this enough. A lot of people will go out and spend like five grand on a reef tank and then buy one of those little RO buddies. Listen. Don't do it. Just spend the money on an RODI unit and buy a good one. Uh, those five, six, seven stage, I think I have an eight stage downstairs because I run the dual um, membrane because I like to use a lot of water in the reef tank given that you know it's 500 gallons. Anyways, make sure you're spending the money because you want to have the best quality water as you possibly can. On top of that, make sure you are changing out your membranes. Make sure you're changing out your carbon. Make sure you are changing those filters out on schedule, um, doing ICP tests. I know ATI and I think there's a couple other ICP tests that also test not only your reef tank, but will test your RODI water. So confirming that you're not getting any heavy metals or nitrates or phosphates or anything in that RODI water, because that is the base of your reef tank. That's where the nutrient control, that's where the success really starts is with a high quality RODI unit. Okay, moving on with the theme of equipment, um, having a skimmer not only rated for your water volume but a little bit bigger it's always good to oversize a skimmer when it comes to a reef tank because you never know it's better to be able to dial the skimmer back than it should just not be strong enough and then not only did you waste the money on that skimmer but now you got to buy a bigger one so buy an oversized skimmer for your reef tank it doesn't hurt worst case scenario dial down and you'll be be good to go now there are some, let's clarify, because there's gonna be somebody out there like, hey, I have a 25 gallon tank with a 25 gallon sump and I put a 300 gallon rated skimmer on there. Let's let's be realistic. So example, if you have a 300 gallon reef tank, buy a skimmer that's good for 600 gallons. You'll be able to not only take care of the 300, but if it gets really stocked or you have a lot of fish or maybe you're feeding heavily, depending on what type of tank you have, you could always dial that skimmer up and um, help provide that nutrient export that you're going to need to keep your nutrients in check. Okay, so that's pretty much it when it comes to the major pieces of equipment I recommend for somebody who's just starting out in the hobby. Now, of course, there are other things you can do. You can add a roller mat, filter socks, bio pellet reactors, different types of reactors. You can dose all sorts of the elements and, and, and chemicals to help reduce nitrates and phosphates. But I'll tell you right now, as a beginner, you don't want to go that direction. Um, that stuff is good for specific applications, but if you're just starting out, all that's going to do is make your system more complex. And you'll find out later when you're trying to diagnose problems with your reef tank, if you have all these different things going on, it's going to be more complex and difficult to actually uh, diagnose and fix whatever might be going on with your reef tank. So keeping it simple with a very qual a very high quality RODI unit, as well as a large, larger uh, quality skimmer is your best bang for your buck and pretty much the, a really good foundation for anybody uh, looking for proper uh, nutrient export and control in the long run. Now, one thing I do recommend for anybody, regardless of the size of your tank, the complexity of it is to have a, a refugium, uh, the largest refugium you can possibly fit in your system. Uh, a lot of us like to have external refugiums. I know if I have the room, I like to do like a 40 breeder or a 55 gallon refugium. Uh, back when I had the 125, I tried to have as much refugium as I possibly we can because it serves two purposes. One, it's great for nutrient export. It serves technically three. Uh, nutrient export is really good on it. Uh, you can sell that stuff to make extra money so you can pay for your reef tank and justify all those corals that you want to buy. And three, it helps with the pH fluctuation at night, especially for those of you who are running calcium reactors. So having a refugium running on the opposite schedule of your um, reef tank, and I keep it very simple. I have the refugium kick on one hour before the main tank goes off, and then I have the refugium turn off one hour after the main tank turns back on. So there's a little bit of overlap there, and it works out great. Um, having a refugium, I've had a refugium on every single tank, except for like maybe nanos, and I don't have one on my little NEM tank upstairs. But other than that, a refugium has, um, has been on every one of my main displays, and um, 
I, I just won't run a tank without one. Okay, so now that we've talked about equipment, let's go ahead and move on to some of the do's and don'ts of nutrient export. So first and foremost, I know that I mentioned this earlier, there are a lot of chemicals out there. I'm not gonna mention any names because we're just not gonna do that. So there's a lot of chemicals out there that claim to remove nitrates and phosphates from your retank, and that's fine. They could do that. Should you use them personally? I don't use them. There's something very iffy and strange about dumping in a bottle that claims to remove nitrates and phosphates and expecting my reef tank to stay alive. I don't use them. I just don't. In the past, have I used stuff like a biopellet reactor? Yes. When I had too many fish in the 125, I needed a biopellet reactor to keep the nitrates down. I didn't have a choice. That, again, application specifically calls for that. Here on the 300-gallon, uh, I have a pretty big refugium. I have great skimmer. I have great nutrient export. And my feeding, my feeding habits are very good. So I don't run into excess nutrients like that really at all. So the biopellet reactor wouldn't be a, a, a thing for me right now. So with that being said, having chemicals dosing your tank on a daily basis, some of you guys have this on like an auto doser. I've seen that before and people have asked about it. Not for me. Every tank that I've seen that runs this stuff, and I'm just going to say this probably going to piss somebody off. Every tank that I've seen that runs um, chemicals to keep your nitrates and phosphates low usually have crappy looking corals. That sounds bad. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. But every client, there, I'll, I'll, I'll clarify. Every client that I've worked with that has used that and then their tank looked like crap, and then we got them off of it and found other ways to get around and control nutrients, their tanks bounced back to look 100 times better. So that's just my personal experience. Sorry if I offended anybody with that, but using chemicals to control nitrates and phosphates, no, not happening. The best thing you can do, and we'll, we'll kind of move on with this, to control nitrates and phosphates starts with, of course, water quality, extra exporting nutrients with a skimmer, refugium. The next thing is how much food are you adding to your reef tank? Um, what type of food? Um, personally, dry foods are not something that I recommend. If you're going away on vacation, you have an auto feeder and that's the only option, you have nobody you can come feed like mysis or a homemade fish food, then yes, do it, but it's not something I would do long term. Now, fish food, dry fish food in particular has, uh, they're very compact and nutrient dense and sometimes the fish don't really get it and it just settles to the bottom of the tank or it gets caught in a filter sock or something and it rots and it just kind of adds to the problem. So I always recommend you stay more natural, if that's the word I'm looking for. So mysis shrimp or a homemade fish food. I have a couple of videos on making your homemade fish food. Um, I've got a request to sell it. I can't do it. I don't want to pay for dry ice. So I've made a ton of videos, so I didn't have to sell it to you and you didn't have to buy it from anybody else. You can just make your own fish food. And again, you look up Fish of Hex, I think homemade fish food, there's probably like seven or eight videos on it. Just make your own and you know what's in it. You're going to save a ton of money in the long run and you're going to have a natural source um, that you can manipulate the, the, the nitrates and phosphate levels. So if you're Let's say, hypothetically, you're low on phosphates. Add more broccoli to your homemade fish food. Add more greens to your fish food. That way, when that stuff breaks down with nori and all that, it's going to you know, have more phosphates in the long run. So you can fine-tune that for your own reef tank down the road. But long story short, stay away from dry foods. Stay away from any chemicals and make your own fish food. Yeah, pretty much sums that up. Uh, let's see. What other do and don'ts? If you are feeding and you're noticing that your fish are not eating all the food, just feed less next time. Don't You can always add more. It's easier to add more if they're still hungry opposed to trying to remove it. I'm um, also trying to stay consistent with how much you feed on a daily basis. If you, if you feed like a two inch by two inch square, just feed that every single day. Then you can really determine if you need to add more food later on or maybe if you do need to dose nitrates and phosphates for whatever reason, you can always do that. So that kind of leads me on to the next thing. So let's just say that your nutrient export and everything is really good so good to the point that you are low in nitrates and phosphates, well, you can always dose that stuff. Um, I dose nitrates every single day on my reef tank, regardless of how much I feed. My reef tank still requires 40 milliliters of nitrates. I make my own here. I sell it on the website. Um, I dose 40 milliliters every single day on the dose, uh, the apex dose, 24 hours, all that good stuff. And uh, my tank just needs that to stay at 10 ppm. It just does. Regardless of how much I feed, that just seems to be what the reef tank likes. So that's what I do. Now, as for phosphates, I dose every once in a while. But phosphates is really easy for me personally because I just throw in an extra sheet of nori. The tangs are happy and the phosphates kind of stay where they are. So with that being said, if your nutrient export is so good and you need to dose that stuff, um, do it. 
Okay, moving on to the final thing that I recommend that you guys stop doing, especially as beginners, and that is stop feeding your corals. That means target feeding, broadcast feeding, whatever feeding you consider the name of it, just stop feeding your corals. Uh, if you're making your homemade fish food or you're feeding quality food in general, that stuff is going to feed your corals. Most of the time, they're just going to be photosynthetic and they're going to be using your reef tank lighting and nitrates and phosphates within your reef tank to grow for the most part. So target feeding, yes, it can be beneficial for some corals, some LPS, but in the end of the day, all you're doing is adding excess nutrients. If you're in there dumping in a bunch of stuff, broadcast feeding your whole reef tank, yeah, it looks cool and you feel good about it, you know, save the whale kind of feelings. But I'm gonna tell you right now, all you're doing doing is wasting money on it and your excess nutrients, you're probably driving your skimmer freaking crazy if we're being realistic here. So stop broadcast feeding and stop feeding your corals altogether. I can't remember the last time I even target fed a coral. I just make high quality fish food, feed the fish, the it gets blown around by the, the yeah, this looks funny on camera, gets blown around on uh, by the power heads and it feeds the coral at the same time. So just do that, it's very simple. Okay, so there's one more subject I wanna go over before I end the video and that is testing. So what do I use to test nitrates and phosphates? Well, I like to use HANA checkers. They're relatively reliable, the reagents aren't that expensive and I like to have a digital reading. So for me personally, that works out well. If you like the color wheel of like a Red Sea or a Niles, by all means, go ahead. But for me personally, HANA checker is the way to go. How often do I test? Right now I test nitrates and phosphates maybe twice a week once a week minimum, maybe twice a week, depending on what I got going on, depending on where my nutrients are currently at. If they were in a stable range the last time I tested, maybe I will uh, do that one times a week. And if I'm trying to make minor adjustments, then I might check twice. So when do I test? This is very important. So if you're testing nitrates and phosphates, it's always best to do it in the morning before you feed. Uh, because once you feed, all that stuff's gonna be in the water column, it's gonna give you a false reading. So test in the morning, feed, wait 24 hours test again if you need to if you're trying to micromanage or make the adjustments on your um your reef tank and you have to test every single day wait 24 hours but test at the same time every morning and make sure you're doing it before you uh you feed that kind of removes any issues with the excess nitrates and phosphates from feeding and you should be good to go so that's pretty much it um if there's anything that you guys want to add to this video feel free to put it in the comment section now if you want to support what i do here um in the fish room or 3d printing wise definitely check out my website currently right now we're doing 50 percent off all coral into until july 15th it's kind of my extended fourth of july sale that i tend to do every single year um also 3d printing is buy three get one free if you so choose to do that and uh, either way i appreciate you guys supporting the channel hopefully you guys like this video Video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you later.